The whole world, my child, is made up of stories. Stories that nature conceals. Stories that each individual collects like puzzle pieces. The stories of every living being. Stories. They are behind everything you see. And they are strongly connected to one another. Collecting and telling them is what makes us alive. Something that becomes proof of our existence. It becomes something no one can take away from us. Something that our souls will cherish forever. But I am the source of every existing story on this planet. The mother of life. The source of existence. And if I had to choose only one of my stories to share, it would be the most beautiful and magical. A story about the connection between a human and the element of water. A human and the waves. A human and the ocean. Ocean, you were here before we appeared, and you will be here after we leave. Limitless, mystical, endless, and a barely explored element. Why do we all find ourselves drawn to you without even realizing it? Is it because we ourselves are mostly made of water? When we are down, we crave the sound of waves and surf. When we get lost on our life path, you remind us how small each of our problems is in comparison to your magnitude. You remind me that there is no need to run or chase, just trust your flow. You are not in a rush, but you are always on time, and you give yourself permission to be different. You can embody peace and you can embody anger. You give life to every living creature on this planet, but you don't expect to be recognized or admired for it. And you can be admired endlessly. Our instructor, the wise one, the source of everything we have. I've been thinking about the fact that in the entire globe there are no two identical stories. No day is the same as the one before it, as in the ocean. No wave repeats one another. No conditions and circumstances can be predicted precisely in advance. The story you are creating every day within your own life is a unique combination of events, people, emotions, and experiences. A combination that will only happen once in a lifetime. And what creates our universal magic to be a human. Constant journey into the unknown, exploring ourselves and the world around us. Always checking with external conditions and making decisions in real time based on our feelings. We are like surfers who want to catch the wave of their dreams so that our endless journey can be filled with purpose one day. This story is about my solo journey to the ocean, where I went with all my equipment and a desire to learn about surfing. This story is about professional surfers who I met during my journey and who shared with me their connection with the waves and their love towards this emotional and beautiful sport.
the story is about you. I want this documentary to be a bit meditative, to introduce you to this element, to allow you to experience it, to ask questions and to find answers. My journey to the first wave began one year ago, when I accidentally stumbled upon a documentary about surfing. First one, then the second, third, and it felt like I simply couldn't tear myself away. So I started studying it more and getting into the details of this water sport. I found out that surfing is one of the most ancient sports on earth in which a person uses a special board to ride on the top of the wave towards the shore using wave energy. Most sources claim that surfing originated in the ancient Polynesia thousands of years ago as a spiritual ritual. It was the fate of the strongest and bravest. Then Polynesian surfers brought this tradition to Hawaii, where surfing began to develop rapidly further to surfing as we know it today. The great explorer Captain James Cook observed canoe surfing in 18th century and wrote, I could not help concluding that this man felt the most supreme pleasure while he was dreaming on so fast and smoothly by the sea. And only in the 20th century surfing began to appear on numerous beaches around the world and today has become an international sport practiced by more than 35 million people around the globe. One of the films that inspired me was about Portugal and the biggest waves in the world in Nazaré. I was so impressed that I thought that I will plan and go to Portugal on my own. And already in August I went to the Atlantic Ocean and during two and a half months have lived and filmed in the cities of Lisbon, then Peniche, where I had my first surfing classes. Then I went to Ericeira, where I practiced more. Then a few surfers recommended me to go to the south of Portugal, to the cities of Sagres and Lagos, which I did. <laughs> and then I went again north to finally visit Nazaré. I came to Portugal without any surfing experience. Spending days in the unknown cities and dozens of hostels, having no plan but being completely open with my heart towards my small research. My corner in this hostel is just a pure chaos of equipment, of chargers, of like some random things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real fan of surfing hostels. Those are the best places to stay while experiencing the place, while searching for a company to surf with. <laughs> Every day I met a lot of people. Some people helped me in taking photos. The others went with me into the ocean to film underwater, which was really fun. Some people showed me secret places around. And then I just thought like, you know what, I just take her to my favorite spot. Glad you liked it. And some of them entirely brought me into their worlds and allowed me to become a part of their routine. Oh my God, so much fun. I actually wasn't expecting this. But no matter how this or that person came to be a part of the film, it was always about their tremendous enthusiasm that they wanted to express. Surfing. <laughs> it is. Yes. And then I had another goal. To catch my first wave here. One year ago, everything was in the planning stages. As I said, it all began when I first learned about Nazare. Then I saved photos of its famous lighthouse, watched a lot of interviews, and pictured myself there in Portugal, meeting surfers, 
and exploring the ocean. And then, when I got here and saw these places with my own eyes, speaking personally with people whose photos are presented in the Nazare Museum, I realized the first important step towards my wave. The power of intention. After all, all great things in our lives begin with a goal and a commitment with yourself that you would do everything necessary to fulfill it from now on. Every wave, it's like kind of, you, you, can, you can say, you can make this parallel with, with your life. It's an opportunity. And sometimes, after the wave goes, I'm not going in this one. And you say, ah, I should have gone. And that's exactly with the opportunities in life. Sometimes, we, I don't go in this. And they always seem bigger when they go than when they come. So I think that's very interesting. And I'm going to tell you a story. The first time I went to Hawaii, I was like 17 years old. And I met a guy. And he has like, I don't know, 50 years at that time. And he said, oh, he looked at us. We are two friends. And he said, hey, two kids, first time here. OK, you won't leave. And, and he said, no, I need to go because my girlfriend is back in Portugal. I need to finish my college. I have my friends. I have everything there. And he said, oh, I was your age when I came here for the first time. And I never left. <laughs> he, he worked in a, in a surf store. He, he, he said, I'm going to stay here for the rest of my life. And I think that's why uh, when you try it, it's different from other sports. You get hooked and you get stoked to, yeah. to this, to the sea and to nature and to this balance with, with your life. That's amazing. Every wave is an opportunity. Surfers are not the type of people that sit around waiting for their chance and the best wave of their lives. These are the people who are hunting for happiness by moving cities, countries and coasts. I basically changed my whole life to surf every day or to be able to surf every day because uh, I, I come from the mountains, I grew up there. It's, it's a whole different world in Austria to here or to Indonesia or any place that I lived with, with the ocean. I always kind of felt like I'm not fully at home in it, it is my home and I adore mountains and snowboarding and I love it, but it's not filling my heart fully. So once I was at the ocean doing water sports and then eventually surfing, I could just feel, okay, this is it. So how do I make this possible? How do I make this possible with work, working abroad, visas, um, and many, many small things that, that are required for you to, to move to the ocean and to make it work, to live here. Being a true surfer entails doing everything in your power to be at the place and at the time when you have the best chance of finding what you are looking for. They are not afraid to try and take every opportunity they get. After all, it leaves as quickly as it comes. It's this moment after you dropped it and you're on it that you're like, wow, it's just incredible. But sometimes it takes even more courage to admit that your current situation is not suitable for you anymore. And you need to start looking elsewhere. Yeah, for me it was, it was clear. When you decide to move in the direction you need, you never know what might happen. And that's the magic. It is also really important to get to know the background when you start chasing your big dream. And if you can, to get to know people who can be your mentors and can explain things to you. We need to be on offshore. You know what I mean? I will try today for the first time. For the first time? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's 
I really fell in love with the whole surfing routine. Firstly, you meet somewhere all together, then you put on your wetsuits, then you take your boards and you go to the car and you drive to see where are the biggest and the coolest waves for today. Let's go. Then you walk all together to the beach and you smile and you talk and you laugh and you feel excited about upcoming waves and upcoming lessons in general. And what do I need to know like as a beginner? Like what does oh, surfers you need, need to know? To know? A lot of things. <laughs> okay, about the boards. <laughs> Probably we should start by the board. Uh, that's a, a board for beginners. Mm. It's uh, bigger than the usual short boards. It's larger and it's a lot of volume. This is the nose of the board. This is the tail. Mm. This is the rails. And as you can see, it's very, very large. Mm -hmm. So very stable. You can surf without uh, moving too much. I tried to understand every single detail of what I must learn. Mm. And now one two, and three. In order to catch and ride a wave, it was important for me to know and to practice how to take off, like to stand up, and then how to balance on my board. And it's not that easy for a beginner. So after a few times, you put it here, and you can turn and go there, and hit the wave, and come and go, and up and down. As a beginner, I also had to understand the stages of the wave. So when you are more experienced, you go for green waves. That means waves that only begin to form in the ocean. But if you are a complete beginner as I am, then first lessons you practice where the wave has already broken and has become a wide water wave, which is much more easier and is not considered a real surfing but you always have to start somewhere. For me, I think it's the most difficult sport because you cannot say, okay, I know everything. You know, I know I can do like this kind of maneuver. I know I can this because it's always different. You can choose your path, but you can never know the exact conditions that will confront you. Surfers consider many factors before heading to the ocean including the surf forecast and observing the waves from the shore. First of all, we need to check the wind direction and the speed of the wind. If it's no wind, we can surf everywhere. If it's strong wind, we need to go where it's good to have clean waves. We need to check the wave size. Then we need to check the period to see how frequent the waves are coming or not and how strong they will come. We need to check the tides, the good time to go surfing or not. The moon has a lot of influence on the tides. And only when you have understood the rules, prepared for the weather conditions, and know what to do in unforeseen situations, you can go to the ocean. I'm being honest, while being in the ocean during every single surfing lesson, I had zero thoughts in my mind. Zero. Like, I thought only about the waves, the people, my body, my surfboard. And that's it. You know, but that, that's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, an intermediate, advanced surfer, a pro surfer, a free surfer, soul surfer, long border, whatever you want to be. We all share that in the water. Like, we all share that thing, like, it's amazing. It's like blown out, like your head goes, bah.
<laughs> you know? Yeah, anytime you're in depth, like with nature, like you go to the middle of the woods, to the top of a mountain, into the water, into the ocean, it's like, it has a big psychological effect on you, where I think it really washes all the bad things and the negative things, and especially if you are, if you are in a bad place, there's a, another thing to it. There's another button in your brain that someone presses when you go in and everything becomes simple. You know, way more simple than you thought it was. You know? yeah. Wow, it's so powerful. I think the worst things I went through, surfing brought me back up, you know. Is there anything that can make you feel more alive than being connected with everything around you? The ocean, the board, complete focus and silence of mind. I don't know, I don't imagine me myself without surfing. For me, it's not a sport, it's make parts of me where I can connect my mind, my body and my heart. It forces us to connect to ourselves, you know, to, uh, to really forget about the rest and to just be there. And yeah, I wish uh, many people can try to surf and to understand that feeling that we get from it. It's, uh, yeah, everyone deserves to feel that way, I think. She stays on the beach always waiting for me. She's yeah. the best dog, truly. <laughs> and the deeper you can feel the inner connection with what you want, the easier it will be for you to overcome all the upcoming stages in which you may face obstacles in one way or another. Paddling is something that takes most of the time in surfing, and that's why it's absolutely essential to understand paddle technique. It's very important. You try to not move your body, all right? Keep your chest high and paddling one, two, one, two. Then you're paddling, paddling, paddling with the... <laughs> you already have, like, it became out of sense. Yeah, because I'm, I'm doing it the right way. I'm, it's already a huge hole. Yeah. <laughs> and then... I wasn't prepared for this part of surfing at all because the tiredness in my hands after an hour in the ocean was greater than in any other part of the body, so that I couldn't even carry a board sometimes. It's already with the leash, with the fins. Fins, all I need to put is the wax. You don't want to slip, all right? Just the board alone, you will slip. And the wax is what creates friction from your feet to and the board. And if I want to slip? <laughs> you just put soap on it. <laughs> Real surfing begins far beyond the shoreline, just about the point where the waves form and grow in strength. And that is considered to be the most ideal location and the correct position of the surfer to catch a wave that only begins to form. It's called a lineup. Before reaching this point, surfers will have to go to the open ocean. They will have to paddle out against the waves coming at them. The work of all the muscles in the body. The first test of your own courage. Understanding and creating a route in your mind taking into account the characteristics of the ocean and currents, and sometimes the need to dive under the waves, and all in order to be exactly where all the possibilities will be opened for you, and where you can meet the wave of your dreams face to face. It's 
not just that you're underwater. It's not like you're still underwater. You're underwater and then your limbs are getting pushed here and here and then here and then here. Yeah, you lose so much energy because suddenly your leg pulls there and then your board pulls you there and you're just like, whoa. Yeah. And then you get a bit nervous. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm fearful. I don't think so. Um, I'm trying to embrace the whole process, but of course you're a bit nervous. You're like, okay, how long is this whole thing gonna be? Um, what is gonna happen when I come up? Is the next uh, wave already coming and breaking on me, kind of? Um, yeah. So yeah. In order to prepare for the physical demands of surfing, such as paddling through rough waves or diving under the waves, many surfers do breath control trainings in the pool. But yeah, you go underwater and you're in a calm space, you're in a quiet, uh, completely silent uh, area all of a sudden. I learned a lot in, in the calm pool water trainings about um, always to be aware to relax your muscles, for example. We would run on the, f on the ground of the pool, but then I would run, but I would really try to relax every other aspect of my body except the legs where I'm running. We would uh, sit underwater uh, for 15 seconds and then jump up to take one quick breath and then go underwater again. And the second you go underwater, you try to relax and to be conscious about how you take a breath is another thing as well. We train on empty lungs, we train on full lungs, full of oxygen, there's different techniques, but it just makes you aware of, okay, like you have this amount of time, the wave is coming, you take a deep, calm breath and then you go under willingly before it hits you. Every day is a new challenge, you know, is because the ocean is always different, the beach is always different, you, your emotion is different too. This, I think, is why people get attacked and they get addicted to this kind, this beautiful sport, because it's a challenge every day. And here you are. A long way has been done and there is no turning back. This is the time to prepare for the incoming wave. Being patient in the water is everything. We stay more time sitting, waiting for the perfect wave, look running a wave. So for us, like when we are sitting, it's like a beautiful meditation, but our mind is always thinking, like, okay, this wave is coming, this now, this now. Our intuition needs to tell us which wave is good to catch. Waiting. The moment when dozens of scenarios are being scrolled in your mind. What if the wave you're waiting for never comes? What happens if it doesn't work out? What if you fall again? What if you make the wrong move? What if you are not ready?
I'm not sure if there is anything more frightening for people than the unknown. Ignorance about the consequences of our actions. Ignorance of what might happen or opposite, what will never become our reality. However, there is still a chance to make friends with your fear. Would you actually even use that to create even more focus? I don't get too scared unless, yes, of course, it's that it's very, very big and it's looking like it's bad weather or a lot of current and the waves aren't as clean. That's when I get a little bit scared, of course. But I don't get scared to the point that I don't go into the water. I recognize my fear and use it as a tool for uh, concentrate even more when I get into those scarier conditions. Because when you get into big conditions, scarier conditions, uh, the most important thing is to not panic. Once fear comes into your system, when you're out there, when you're surfing, then the panic is next and then you're already, you've already lost. Yeah, of course I get scared. The waves are big, I'm scared, my heart, heart is like pumping through my chest, feels like my ribcage is gonna explode. I have a lot of respect for the ocean and it's, it's really powerful. Uh, it rules over us for sure and it's okay to have that fear. Um, but I think it's good to not stop there. I think it's good to, to test ourselves and go, get over that fear if you feel ready for it. It's good to be afraid, you know, because, come on, yeah, it's like we, we're dealing with uh, the waves, we deal dealing with the Mother Earth, you know. But if you have a good preparation, and I, I feel like you need to have a good mind preparation and you need to feel like your good thoughts, you need to have a conversation with yourself. Because the reality, we have so many voices inside of us, they say, don't do, ah, it's too big, ah, don't do, don't go to the left, go to the right, go to the sound. So in the big waves, I start to learn which voice I'm going to feed or which voice I'm going uh, allow to, to lead me. It was a bit terrifying at times. I will remember Ereseira as the place where I experienced real surfing for the first time. Like I mean before I just learned the basics and here those were real waves. <laughs> those were real waves. The waves we were catching were green waves. What are green waves? It's the waves that, that are forming and not breaking yet. Normally when you're beginning you catch the white water waves. The white wash, the, the wave was already breaking. Today we catch a lot of waves, like real waves, serious waves, green waves. One thing I understood is that you don't need to get rid of your fear. This is something you must face. I really love this quote of Mark Twain that says, do what you fear most, and the death of fear is inevitable. Just let go all far-fetched scenarios and thoughts about the future, and... And then you just go. These moments of endless connection are the results of searching, preparation, knowledge, intuition, 
and at the right moment, courage. Resisting the fear at the most crucial time and just trust in your flow. It is about your willingness to go through everything that is required of you to experience these feelings standing on the board. To join the powerful force of the wave you have chosen. And making the best of what's been given to you at this exact moment. They say surfing is a way to be free. Spiritually physically, mentally. Being free, dancing in the ocean. It makes no difference if you're a professional surfer or someone who went to look for the wave for the first time ever. We all experience similar fears, emotions, mistakes, goals and failures because in the end we all just try to give our best. The ocean constantly shows us how a bad wave will always be followed by a good one if you don't drop the board and don't decide to go ashore. We think about this too much. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have to think at all, you know. It shows that you will always rise again after you fall. Surfing shows us the importance of the road that leads us to the wave, since it's as important as the wave itself. Riding the wave and feeling euphoria of the process takes the least time compared to the time a surfer spends paddling, training and waiting in the ocean. And that doesn't make the process any less magical. This is exactly what makes it so inspiring and unique. And if one day you hear the wave coming, the wave that thrills, excites, but scares you at the same time, a wave that may divide your life into before and after, a wave that can become a moment you've been waiting for your whole life. Take a deep breath. Connect with this moment. Put aside all your thoughts. Face your fear. And just 